Hi, Toaster here from Aussie 8. Welcome to beautiful downtown Horrocks Beach. I'm here today with hopefully the final in the Starlink in Motion series where I'm hacking at my Franken Starlink. Today, do the final preparation to install it in the car and run it directly off 12 volts. Um, but I do have a twist today, brought to us courtesy of Oleg Kutov, Kutkov. Um, this is his blog on the internet. I'll just do a quick about me here. He's a systems engineer in Kiev, Ukraine, and seems to have a lot of experience with Starlink. He's repairing units that have been damaged in the Ukraine war. Uh, Starlink phased arrays, both square dishes and circular ones that have been through all sorts of uh, uh, trauma in the war. Some have gone underwater, some have been shot with ammunition, etc, etc. So I guess through his uh, work on repairing these and bringing many of them back to life, he's uh, figured out, um, you know, the innards probably got hold of some schematics. Um, but in his blog back in June, he um, published a really interesting article, which is where you can power the Starlink from 12 volts and bypass um, power over Ethernet. So essentially, in the setup here, the 12 volts from the car is up converted to 48 volts and then sent across the cable to the phased array, to the square dishy. And then inside of the square dishy, the um, voltage is actually down, down converted back down to 12 volts, which is what the main internal voltage is. So going up to um, 48 volts to send it across the wire and then back down to 12 is not that efficient. And the reason why it, it is up converted to 48 volts is because of the long cable runs, just to make sure that there's enough power uh, for the electronics. Um, but in our case, because the cable run is not that long, we can actually bypass the whole power over Ethernet bit. And in this article here, he shows you how to do that. And it's actually really simple. There is a, um, a big inductor, which he's circled in this picture here, which he says remove. And then there's a, um, a feedback diode um, that also needs to be removed. So in terms of changes to the board, that's it. And because I'd already hacked at my um, Starlink board to fix the burnt traces that you can see on this previous video linked up here somewhere. Um, there, I figured, well, why not just you know keep going? So I uh, have actually already done this process. I removed the um, the uh, big inductor. This is it here, and it went on the board um, over here. And then this is the tiny feedback diode. It's really small. I was going to desolder it, but then I actually just took a pair of tweezers and was able just to wiggle it free from the board without desoldering. In fact, that just shows you how um, fragile these boards can be. So mine is obviously exposed here. Um, yeah, it wouldn't take much of a knock, I guess, to dislodge one of these components. So do be careful. Yeah, they're pretty easy to pull off. The only other bit that he shows in the article here is how you then can connect up the 12 volt supply directly. Uh, one point is the um, is the pad here where we have removed the big inductor and as you can see I've actually already done that piece of soldering so that's going to be the positive coming in there and then the negative goes across these components here which what does he call them are oh, the ceramic capacitors. Um, all of this side of them is negative so it doesn't matter if you have a butchered soldering job like I have you can just you know, connect up a few of them. So I've connected up my negative to, to that point there. Solder on these two points for your 12 volts. And there's one final piece for the, this is the cable that brings the ethernet and used to bring in power over ethernet into the board from the, from the router. It um, needs to be rewired to just have a standard ethernet jack on the other side. So I've already kind of started that process. And it's just, you don't have to do any swapped pairs. You just wire it up as a standard B connector. You're following the color guides of the Starlink cable. Yeah, in the article here, he shows how efficient by passing the 48 um, up and down converters and shows that the median consumption is around five to six amps when in operation. 
So that um, is pretty good for car use. Now the other thing they say here is, he says here is to absolutely not exceed um, 15 volts. Um, and he does warn here that some Teslas output at 16. And indeed mine does, 15.6 is the output. So this is why we still need a, a DC to DC converter of some sort for the Tesla. And that's to take the 16 volts down to 12 volts. So I have this unit here. So you just connect up uh, one end to your cigarette lighter and the other end will output hopefully a fairly smooth 12 volts that you can feed straight into the board. The final prep that I'm going to do here is to just try and um, protect the board somewhat and in various articles um, people have talked about using Plasti Dip. Again I'm traveling so this is all that I really could get hold of. So the plan is to just coat the whole board with Plasti Dip just to protect uh, the components. Just to neaten up the project a bit, I've got this connector that I'm going to use for the 12 volts just to keep it to get a bit neater on the Starlink side. So I'll, um, I think I'll just hot glue the connector to the corner here and then just do the short um, hookup wires to it. And then the wires coming from the cigarette lighter into the other end of the connector so that I can disconnect this if I need to. Here's the result of the um, putting a regular ethernet jack on the other end of this cable. So what I think I'll do is I'll just um, hot glue these two connectors down somewhere um, and that should just make it a bit, a bit neater, something like that. In Oleg's article, he talked about using a capacitor for longer runs of 12 volts in the car. Um, so I've picked up a 2200 microfarad capacitor rated at 25 volts. So I'm just going to wire this across the, the 12 volts, probably when I put this uh, connector on onto the board. So let's get to it. Just make sure we get the polarity of the capacitor right. So the gold is a negative. These connectors also have a little polarity symbols here. I'll just follow those. Actually, this is the end that should go on to the phased array because it's exposed, but the phased array doesn't have any voltage, so fingers in there shouldn't short anything out. All right, so this side is positive. Okay. don't have any flux so the uh, solder is bouncing off a bit until it heats up it's not too bad it'll make it'll do I'll just um, wrap that in um, masking tape well, I'm just trying to find the best place to hot glue this 12 volt connector I might have made these hook up wires a bit short I think I'm just going to stick it on the top of this chip that terminates the the Ethernet connection. Ah. Well, this is not very sticky. Didn't really work that. Let's try again. All right, well, that seems better. All right, so I just need to solder cable from the car into this other end of this connector. Well, after a bit of uh, faffing around, there's the um, car end of the connector. So cable comes in from car and then plugs in to there, like so. I think the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue this Ethernet jack to this heatsink. It's probably not a wise thing to do, but I've got nowhere else to put it. And then the cable from the error router would go in there. And so those are the two cables coming out of the setup. They look fairly neat, so long as um, the hot glue holds. All right, so there's the final setup. See if it works.
Well, after a bit of futzing around, got the connectors stuck, hopefully holding. Had to put the Ethernet jack closer to the DC jack. They're kind of glued together. I think it'll do. So before I install it all in the car, I just wanted to show you the final result of the Plasti Dip and me attempting to tidy up the cabling and connectors. It's all right, not, not ideal, but it's okay. And then that's the uh, Plasti Dip. I also dug out um, the another Starlink, the one that we normally use day to day, for a bit of a bit of a comparison. Um, so there they are side by side. Obviously, one is a lot bulkier than the other. I mean, admittedly, the you know the Starlink is not designed to be used in a car at 12 volts. But yes, yeah, so on the um, right, you can see the inverter that I used uh, during the temporary setup. Uh, the other comparison worth noting is on the left the wattage of the Aero, Aero 6 is about 4.4. The MyHack Starlink according to Oleg is consuming about 7 when idle, so 4.4 and 7 is just under 12. Well, let's just say it's 12. The right hand side setup is typically drawing 20 to 40 watts through an inverter is my understanding, I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, there's definitely some savings there besides the space. Somebody else on the internet had recommended using command strips to mount it to the sunroof rather than tape. I think that's a great idea. Might do six for good measure, I think. So from my previous video, some of you may have seen that I taped this to the sunroof and it it did work, it didn't look very pretty, but it did work. Um, but hopefully it'll look a bit neater with command strips, but yeah, I'm not sure if they're gonna work. Let's see. Again, if it doesn't, it's on my head. So if you've um, been here for the long haul with me, this has been quite a journey and has taken some time. Apologies for those of you that we're hoping for a quick five minute video from go to woe. Um, but yeah, I appreciate those of you that have watched. Because I think the result has been pretty good considering the adversity that I've been through. Uh, I want to put this fairly close to the back, obviously, for a, from a cabling perspective, but I still want to put my sun shade in, which I've taken out to do the install. Is that going to hold? I've obviously, obviously got to do something about that cable. Um, the middle ones don't seem to want to hold that well. Because the sunroof is curved, um, and so I'm trying to make the phased array bend a bit. It's not so happy doing it. Yeah, those ones won't stick, so, but with just the four, it feels kind of okay. Um, yeah, I definitely need to do something with this. Oh, no, that's come off. I think we might have to go back to tape. It's not ideal. But yeah, I think I'm going to put some tape up here as well. I'll be back. All right, as you can see, it's down. Yeah, they, they wasn't going to hold up there. All right, so we're back to just tape. I've got removed the command strips. If anybody's got any ideas um, on how to have this stay up there and not use tape, um, you know what to do. Right, I'm just going to put some tape here to kind of act as a double-sided mechanism and then I'll just throw some tape around the edges. Um, I need more tape. I think this is going to fall before I can get more tape. Um, hmm, all right, well I can try using my head. <laughs> Necessity, what do they say? Another reinvention or something. This Starlink has been through a hell of a lot. I'm surprised it still works. 
Use my head again. Alright, one final bit with the head, hopefully. Well, it's half holding. Right. The tape will also solve my cable problem. All right, well, as dodgy as ever, but that'll have to do with the um, sunshade up. It won't look so bad. Well, except for the bodgy tape job, this is kind of the, I guess, near final setup. It's probably sh could do something better with these cables. But for the power, I was able to hide it underneath this um, rubber. And just bring it down to there. And then the DC DC converter is just kind of hanging from there's a hole up here for the uh, emergency release for the charge port. So I'm just it's just sort of suspended there and then it's just plugged into the cigarette lighter. The Ethernet cable just down here into the error. Car is powered on, so we've got power. Let's see um, if we're getting any satellite signal. All right, well, before all of this falls on my head, let's have a look um, on this phone, what we've got. So I'll um, make sure that the, um, the SIM is turned off. So we're connected to Aussie 8, which is the Wi-Fi hotspot coming from the air It does say we're connected, so that's good, right? It's very good. Um, let's have a look. So yeah, we're connected to the router, but the Starlink is not connected yet. Let's um, open up the Starlink app and see if we've got anything. Yep, says we're online. Be mindful that I'm just parking it right next to the house here, so it's not going to have a clear view of the sky. So yeah, there's a bit of downtime there. But hey, look, it's um, looks like it's up. So yeah, it's saying the Starlink is just powered on. Take about 50 minutes to stabilize. Uh, but let's give it a speed test. It's pretty good. Something that's just powered on and is sitting by the lee of the house. I think it's a pretty, pretty decent download. It's, Amazing how the uploads are at the moment. When we first got our Starlink, they were sort of in the 20 megabits per second range, but more recently they've been double that. So this one's at 42, which is a very good result. There you go. One Starlink in motion. Still not the final setup, you know, with the tape. Um, but what can I do? But yeah, it's now powered directly off the 12 volts. No, no PoE. Um, yeah, so I think... Um, you might see a few videos now where um, we use it for streaming live, um, stuff like that. So anyway, see you out there. Bye. Well, that didn't last long. In the morning, I woke up to this mess. All right. Well, we've got to try another method to get this to stay on the sunroof.